Hello, hello, and welcome to Fingerstyle Thursday, where every single Thursday I write a new original piece on the ukulele, and then we break down the theory and the techniques behind it. Now, if you're looking to learn this piece, the tabs are always available on my Instagram stories for free. So go over, if you're on a Thursday, go over and screenshot that right now. If not, head over to my Patreon, link in the comments. For three pound a month, you get the sheet for these every single week. Plus some theory lessons also on Patreon. If you want to get straight into the exercise, then just use the chapters and go straight to the theory section. But if not, um, at the moment, I'm doing something called Chord Vember over on Instagram and Facebook, where I've pledged every single day in November to basically teach an alternate chord shape for common chord. So for example, like instead of playing this C chord, we play that C chord. Or instead of playing, you know, uh, instead of this G minor, play this G minor but basically one new chord every single day of November so if you've never delved into your alternate chord shapes and want to know a bit more about them or just are fed up with the chords that you know and want to, an easy way to learn some new chords then head over to either Instagram or Facebook and go check that out cool so hopefully we've got our tab in front of us now patreon or Instagram go get it let's dive into what we're talking about today so this week's exercise is actually a pull-off exercise written in the key of C. Um, we only ever go around a C chord, and that's whether we're playing a C chord here on the third fret, or we're playing a C add nine on the fifth fret, or we're playing another C chord on the tenth fret. Those are basically the places we're going around with the chords, but they're all C chords. Now, there's one shape that I'm basically using so it's tests all your different fingers. That's the main reason I'm using it for you. But basically, each one is using all notes from the C major scale. And if you remember, your C major scale is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, one thing I always talk about is not just learning your shapes, your scales as like a, a box shape, as we call it, but also learning the notes all across the different strings because if you learn that all across the A string all across the second string etc 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 it starts to map out your fretboard now that can be a very daunting process to start with so I do have quite a few fingerstyle first days previous ones where we just look at mapping basically a C major scale across a single A string so start there and then it's sort of about learning the notes on your fretboard. Because if you know where the notes on your fretboard are, C, then you can find the notes of your scale. You're looking for your C's, D's, E's, F's, G's, A's, and B's. So for our pull-offs, we're kind of actually relying on what feels like an F chord shape. And what I mean by that is if you play me an F chord, what I want you to do is strike the fourth string and then pull it off to an open. So at the moment we're fretting it on the second fret, and then you need to pull off so you get that open A string. So technically we're playing notes A and then G. Two notes from the C major scale. So what I want you to try and do next is then pull off where your next fretting, which is the second fret and the first string. So that'll be your index finger and you'll pluck the second string and pull off that. So we've got two pull-offs in total, one on the A string, and that's always played with our middle finger. Sorry, the G string and the middle finger. And then one on the A, uh, E string with our index finger. Pull off, pull off. And those are the two fingers that we'll really be using to test in this piece. Now, one of my favorite things to do when I'm playing pull-offs and trying to play them quickly and sort of make them nice and legato and fluid is after I've done a pull-off, I will play a single note in between before my next pull off. So I sort of almost look at them as groups of three. So what I mean by this is if we have this F chord shape again, if we pull off, we pluck the fourth string and then pull off. And then straight after that, I want you to pluck the open third string. So you're gonna pluck, pull off, pluck. Pluck, pull off, pluck. So plucking the fourth string, pull off, pluck the third string. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, with our second string, I want us to have the same idea. So we're gonna take it as a pattern of three, but we're gonna pluck our second string where index finger is on the first fret. So you're gonna pluck, pull off, 
and then you're going to pluck the fourth string. Nice open fourth string. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now the reason I'm talking about these as basically thinking of it as three so much is because the rhythm has to be very tight. They're eight notes. One, two, three. Realize that pull off is not really quickly. We want everything to be da, da, da. very robotic. Da, da, da. Which if I was counting it would be one and two. One and two. The biggest thing that we always go wrong with hammer-ons and pull-offs is trying to play them too quickly. We still need the rhythm to be very strict. One and two. Not one and two. One and two. So we have those two groups of three. So we're going to basically play one, two, three, one, two, three. And that's your pull, off, pluck. And then your pull, off, pluck. Pull, off, pluck, pull, off, pluck. Now, like I said, when I'm playing pull-offs, that is one of my favourite tricks to do to get them sounding really quick and really legato because that extra pluck that you put in gives you a bit more breathing room to prepare yourself for the next hammer-on or pull-off. Right, so once we think we're happy with our pull-offs, let's go have a look how this works out in the piece. So the very first bar of our piece is this little pull-off uh, sort of exercise that I've just been talking about. So again, pretend you're looking at an F chord and we're going to pluck our fourth string on the second fret, pull off, then straight away pluck that third string. And again, if I'm counting, I'm going one and two, one and two. Straight after that, you're going to pluck the second string on the first fret, pull off to open, and then pluck the open four. And again, that's a one, two, three pattern. But rhythmically, if we count it all, we're going one and two and three and. One and two. And again, one and two and three and. So actually for that pattern, we just have one more note to finish it. And that's gonna be using our ring finger on the first string to play that C note. One and two and three and four. And again, pull off, pluck, pull off, pluck, and then pluck that first string third fret. Use your ring finger because then your hand never has to move so you don't have to keep too many eyes on it and you can focus on the right hand if you need to. Right so that little pattern is going to come up quite a lot. So that is our first bar. One and two and three and four. Our second bar we're already in our C chord so we're just going to arpeggiate it and we're going to play three four sorry three two four one four two and again, let's slow that down. Just another arpeggio. Three, two, four, one, four, two, three, two. And again, as you should know by now, hopefully, uh, my picking technique is always thumb, thumb, index, middle. If yours differs, do not worry about it, but I always recommend trying as many as you can so you can try and find which style suits you the best, whether that's with four fingers, three fingers, or two fingers. So again, that bar is going to be three, two, four, one, four, two, three, two. They're all eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. So if I put those two bars together, we will go one and two. So we get a slight breather at the end of the first bar. One more go. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and. Now our next two bars are exactly the same. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. No different, you can already do it. So our next bar this is where our pull-offs get a little bit trickier, okay? This is where I'm really trying to test you. So, it's a descending pattern, and these are played in 
basically groups of four notes. So for example, our first pattern, it would be our ring finger on the second string, third fret. And also you will want, because we need to pull off to the first fret on the same string, on the second string. So you want both fingers there ready. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pluck the second string on the third fret, and that's gonna pull off to the first fret. And then from there, you're gonna also pull off to the open without striking the string again. So it's a double pull off. You strike, pull off, pull off. Strike, pull off, pull off. Sorry, microphone. <laughs> now, if you're watching this and wondering how the hell can you get a sound out of that last pull off when you've already done a pull off and you're not striking it again, this is where your pull offs, basically, playing them with the right technique comes in. We don't want to simply just lift our finger off for a pull off, because as you can hear, it doesn't make a lot of sound. Instead, what you're trying to do with a pull off is you're actually plucking the string, but with your other hand. So for me, that would be my left hand. So you're sort of actually plucking the string like I would like that. And that's what creates the strong pull off sound. So when I'm plucking that, I'm plucking, pulling off, and then I am pulling with that index finger. Notice not enough so I bend the string so it goes crazy, but just enough so I'm getting a sound out of it. Now I said this is a pattern of four, so basically we have that pluck, pull off, pull off, and then straight after, I'm gonna pluck the open fourth string. Pluck, pluck, pull off, and then there. Third fret, pull off to first, pull off to open, and then pluck your open fourth string. One and two and. Now we're gonna go through a series of these pull-offs. And the only difference is, is where they are on the fretboard. Now my thinking between where they are on the fretboard is I'm just using the notes from my C major scale. So that goes G, F, E, C, B, A, A, G, E, and then D, C, A. My only thought is that I know my C major scale, I know what notes are in it, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, so I can use any of those notes to create a riff or something cool because it'll work because I'm playing over a C chord in the key of C. So the next place, our next pull off will be on the first string and fingering you can choose what you do here but um, I tend to do my, it'll be basically be the third fret on the first string and then you're going to pull off to the second fret because that's C to B and then that'll pull off to open. So for me I'm using middle index and then open like that. You could, if you wanted, also use your middle index and then pull it off. Um, in all honesty, I definitely move between the two. So whichever one is most comfortable in the moment. So that's with a ring middle, or you can use your middle index. Doesn't matter whichever one you find is most comfortable. So that little fill will be, we're plucking the third fret, first ring, pull off to second, pull off to open, and then plucking your open fourth string again. Now, those two fills go basically back to back. One and two and three and four and. And that's the rhythm that this whole fill fills up. It's just next we move to th five, three and open, and that's on the second string ring index open on the second string five pull off to three pull off to open and then open fourth string and then we get to the first string and it's going to be the same five three open and then open fourth string so starting on the second string we have three pull off to one pull off to open open fourth string first string we have three pull off to two off to open, fourth string, then back to the second string, fifth fret, pull three, pull off to open, pluck the fourth, and then the first string, five, pull off to three, pull off to open, and then an open fourth. Now for those of you that aren't used to your pull-offs, you might find that quite hardcore. But 
basically the pull-offs allow us to have a bit more breathing room on our right hand. So like I said, sitting down and studying your pull-off technique is a really good idea. You don't want to just lift your finger off. If I, that's me just lifting my fingers off. And then you can hear I'm plucking, literally taking, plucking the string but just the opposite way with the opposite hand. It feels very weird, but that is the pull-off technique that we need to be looking for if we want to get a nice zingy pull-off. So once we've done that big riff, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, we go back to our original bar, one and two and three and four. And that finishes that little section right there. Now for our next little section, it's actually exactly the same idea, just somewhere else on the fretboard. So remember when we were using the sort of F chord shape. Now I want you to use the same shape and the same riff, but we're actually gonna take it to the 11th, sorry, the 9th fret, 8th fret, and 10th fret. Up there. And again, these are just notes from the C major scale. I've just kept it nice and lazy by using the same chord shape. Score. So that means our middle finger will be plucking the ninth fret on the first string and then pulling off to the open. So it's still that one, two, three, one and two. Then my index finger will be pulling off the eighth fret on the second string to open and then still plucking the fourth string straight after. And then ring finger will be on the 10th fret, which again, that just on the 10th fret as a C chord. So we have one and two and three and four. Exactly the same riff here, just different notes. So if we go back to our first couple of bars, remember what we did, one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four and. Right hand, we are gonna do exactly the same as that, but we're just up this end of the fretboard. That's the only difference. One and two and three and four. And then we're gonna play that same arpeggio, keeping that ring finger on the 10th fret. Three, two, four, one, four, two, three, two. One and two and three and four and. So altogether, that, those little two bars, one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four. Next, we're gonna take the exact same idea, but this time we're gonna move it to the fourth fret. So again, imagine playing F chord but just on the fourth fret. So that means on the first string, it'll be four, pull off to zero. Pluck third string. On the second string, index, third fret, pull off to zero, fourth string. And then ring finger will be on the fifth fret on the first string. One and two and three and four. Still the same shape as that guy and this guy just different and the reason why it's uh, that particular placement fretboard again is because these are notes from the C major scale I'm just picking and choosing that there is a B so it's B to G that's a G G to E and that's a D so again just playing around with all notes from my C major scale so same thing one and two and three and four and then we're still going to arpeggiate one and two and three and four and. So for our second section, we go one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four and. And then we get before we had this. We're pretty much going to do exactly the same, but just in a different order. So reverse, <laughs> that's all. So all we're doing again is we're same pull-offs. So we're training the same pull-offs. We're just almost playing it backwards. So we're first string, fifth, pull off to three, pull off to open, and then always pluck that fourth string open. Then we have the second string, five, pull off to three, pull off to open pluck your fourth, back to first, three, pull off to two, pull off to open, fourth, and then down to our second string, three, pull off to one, pull off to open, and 
let that open. G string. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And that's our little riff, which then leads us back into our original. So if I play all that second half nice and slowly. Now on the score, we have a repeat marker next. So basically you go back to your and start from there and play all that little part all again. Once we've done that, we just go literally back to the start of the piece. With the big run down. And that's it. We're all done. Thank you for joining me yet again for another Fingerstar Thursday. Um, I hope <laughs> this one has been enjoyable. I always try and set them at varying degrees of difficulty. So if you found, for example, today's far too difficult because your pull off game is not where you want it to be, then by all means, remember this is Fingerstar Thursday number 64. There's a previous 63 uh, arrangements and they, like I said, they all vary in difficulty. So find some that look at pull offs and some will be easier. So have a look at those and take that for it. This whole thing is always never meant to be done in consequential order. You don't have to do it in order, but it's just basically if one is too hard, don't worry. The reason I put these exercises together is for practice and training. I don't expect you to be able to play it straight away today perfectly. Thank you so much. If you appreciate today's lesson, please give it a nice like and maybe share it to your friends. If you're not subscribed to me every single Thursday, I will do this. Remember, Sheets on Patreon, I also teach lots of lessons, technique and theory based and all my tabs are over there. So if you like my face and want to hear me talk more about teaching, then please head over to Patreon, links in the comments. Thanks again for listening. Have a great week.